I'm sorry I'm not privy to this information, but as far as I know, the negotiation was conducted by Raman Yaakob on behalf of Sarawak with his team of officials, including ministers from Sarawak. And on my, my side, it was me, the Petronas uh, senior officials, backed by Raja Moha, who was advisor, economic advisor to the government then, and uh, Tun Ismail Ali, the <coughs> governor of Benegara. Tun Saleh Abbas was never in the picture because he only came in to help uh, draw up the law, finally, when Tun Raza agreed with the proposals that were put to him. Uh, that, that was all. And uh, as far as we know, it was Ramai Yaakob who agreed. And uh, there was a, a dinner that night, and, and the, 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 the vested deed agreement was drafted in the afternoon after the agreement, and it was signed that evening. Thank you. Under, I think, Section 3, Clause 2 of the Petroleum Development Act, uh, for that I call it Petronas Act, just for purposes of uh, saving time. <laughs> uh, under Section 3, Clause 2, Petronas acts on the direction and control of the Prime Minister. Uh, so I think that may answer your question that uh, it's not Petronas really, it's the government in power Prime Minister specifically that is directing Petronas. Uh, uh, I um, totally agree with uh, Tommy that uh, the primary motivation here is political and not legal. But I think it's the Prime Minister, not Petronas. Can I, can I ask you? I think that the legal answer is that from Tangana's perspective, that was a pretty good case, and it won't be Tangana's position if you go to court, is that as far as we are concerned, uh, uh, unless you make payment to us as the contracts require us require, it is not a discharge of your obligation. So it's a very glorious argument. Uh, you owe me some money, you have to pay me. And if you don't pay me, you, you have not legally discharged your debt. Good luck to you, you can go and pay Tibet or Nepal or Lim but it's not discharging your legal obligation to us. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I think if you look at section 4 of the PDA, it says that the cash payment made by the corporation, which is Petronas, and it says it shall make the payment either to the, uh, the government of the federation or the relevant state, as may be agreed between the parties. So you firstly have to look at the 1975 agreement that was entered into between the state of Kelantan, Bangano, or the other states. Now, that is section 4. Now, in so far as section 3.2 is concerned, Patronas is subject to the control and direction of the Prime Minister, and he can issue from time to time directions as he deems fit. And under the Act, Patronas has to abide by those directions. Uh, they do not have a discretion in the matter. But of course, the directions, the directions have to comply with the law. The directions, no direction whatsoever can go outside the act. So I, I, I think that we should not overstate the discretion of the Prime Minister. And I'm sure the Prime Minister would also have to act in accordance with Article 8, Equality Before the Law and Equal Protection of the Law. Well, in reply to your question, uh, to your yeah, to your question, I think Rais must have uh, been dreaming because I never make any statement. The only person who is not consistent is Rais because uh, I have always been defending uh, the provisions of this uh, law uh, from day one and uh, is uh, in the law which I have drafted. This is a political naughtiness, they call it. <laughs> Thank you very much for directing this question to me. Actually, it's, the mechanism is already in place. The budgetary system for the money that the federal government receives from Petronas 
either by way of dividend or by way of, of, of loans that uh, the federal government could uh, expect from Petronas. And through the normal budgetary uh, system, I think they could uh, channel this money through the various ministries for various uh, 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 things that they want to do, whether it's education, health, or whatever. And for the state, when I talk of a mechanism because of this dispute between the state of Kelantan, the state of Terengganu and Petronas and of course the federal government. I was prepared to offer myself as the middleman in order to help monitor the, the use of this fund once it is agreed for disbursement so that uh, money will not, not be used for any other purpose other than for what it's intended for. And of course we can think of thousands of ways of how this money can be channel to the people through various things that the people need. Thank you. Since Professor Sharp uh, embarked on this uh, question about the future, let me just elaborate to you. When I was chairman of Petronas, we did uh, have a proposal to set up a heritage fund whereby a certain percentage from the revenue would be kept in this heritage fund for the future and we also have under the law the inception of a national petroleum advisory council that would advise the prime minister on how petroleum ought to be exploited and whether or not we should just leave the the oil underground that's for the petroleum council <coughs> to consider and 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 suggest to the Prime Minister before Petronas decides on what to do with the oil resources. Thank you.